So, hi students and uh, we are going to do array factor. So, I hope before the new year we are able to complete it. Uh, this is a very simple uh, derivation and uh, let's get into it straight away. So, what is an array? Array is nothing but a group of similar elements. We, we have already done a rough uh, introduction about the types of arrays. So, there is end fire array and there is a broadside array, right? So, if the individual elements of the array are equally spaced, we call them as linear array. So, linear array is nothing but when you have a lot of uh, elements that are equally spaced um, uh, along a line, then we call them as linear array, right? So, similar elements, that is uh, what we look at array as. Now, if the elements are fed with currents of equal amplitude, that means each of these elements uh, each of these elements are uh, fed with equal amplitude and they have uniform progressive phase shift along the line. Then we call it as uniform linear array. So let's uh, get into what is this array factor. So array factor is a, by which the array increases the field strength over that of a single element radiating the same total power. So it is the uh, it is by which the array increases the field strength. So, we'll be talking about the electric field here, which is contributed by every single element and we will see the total power. So, now I'm going to consider, so the derivation begins from here. So, this will be the first point of the derivation. Consider a linear array of n isotropic point sources in which the point sources are spread equally and are fed with in phase currents of equal amplitude E naught. So let's look at how the diagram is going to look. So you just have to draw it like this y axis, the x axis. Then uh, I will think of uh, these are the elements. So we are doing this for n um, point sources. So we are going to take uh, the number of point sources that we are going to consider is going to be n okay so n will be the number of elements now what we're going to do is we're going to take a point p which this is in the far field so where is this point you need not write uh, where it is and all but it is un understood that this is in the far field right so when we are calculating radiation pattern or we are all doing in the far field now what you do is now you join uh, each of these elements each of these elements to point okay. just give me a minute I'm messing it up. Just give me a second. So we are considering a point P, which is in the far field. And we need to find out the total electric field here. The individual electric field is given by each element here. So we're considering one element here, second element here, third element here. And we are doing this for N isotropic point sources. So that's why it is written out here. <clears throat> So it is written out here. So that's why we have written it out here. Consider a linear array of n isotropic point sources in which the point sources are spread equally. So that's why we are considering n point sources here, right? Now, after we consider this, we have to find the net effect. What is the net electric field at this point P? So we're going for that calculation. That will give us ultimately the array factor. So uh, let me write what is the total EMS. So the total far field values at a distance point P 
is obtained by adding the field. What kind of field? Electric field of individual sources. So I'm going to write it here. Total E total is E naught E raised to 0J of psi plus E naught. So it's a magnitude and the angle that we are considering plus E naught. So magnitude is same and you will see the angle will keep on. So here we have considered 0 because this first element doesn't have any other neighbor. You know, it doesn't have any other element which we are comparing it to. So, it will become nothing but, so it will go on till, till plus E naught E raised to J N minus 1 of psi. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take E naught common. So, what am I going to get inside is nothing but So, this is the way it's going to look like. And let's call this as equation number 1. Right? Now, what is this psi uh, that I have written here? Psi is nothing but the total phase difference that we are getting of the fields at point B. So, what is psi? So, where this psi is beta d cos of theta. We write it as plus alpha considering the attenuation part of it um, and the difference between the two elements like I said. So this is the phase difference between the fields at point P. So this represents the total, uh, we can say, <clears throat> the phase difference. Right? Now, the first element 1, as I said, does not have a phase difference, right? Why it doesn't have a phase difference? Because it doesn't have another element uh, next to it. So, this one is considered as the reference element. So, this one doesn't have any phase difference, okay? So, uh, here, that's why it is E raised to, taken here as E raised to 0 J phi, J sign. Because anything raised to 0 will become 1, right? So, the reason that this becomes 1 is because this element 1 or the isotropic source 1 does not have any other neighbor. So, this will be considered as a reference element. I hope that point is clear. Okay. Now, I am going to look at this equation that is psi is equal to beta d plus this phi. Right. So, now what is beta? Beta is nothing but the phase shift constant. And what is alpha? It is the phase difference in different points or I can call it as adjacent also. Adjacent points is the meaning of that. That's the phase difference of the adjacent points. Okay. So alpha is the phase difference. Beta is the phase shift constant. And psi is the phase difference at the point P. That means it represents the total uh, phase difference, right? Uh, and between two elements is alpha. So, uh, when you look at this diagram, what you have to think is, if I'm looking at the total phase shift, then at this point P, the total phase shift is psi. The total. But if I consider what is the phase shift between these two elements, then it is alpha. That is the difference between alpha and psi. Psi is for the total phase shift. And alpha is the phase shift between these two isotropic elements. Considering one to be the reference isotropic source. So moving ahead, I am going for the derivation. So therefore, for further simplification, what I am going to do is. So I hope this is clear. This will be the first point of the derivation. This is the second point of the derivation. Uh, so, we are adding it, we are finding out what is psi, what is beta, what is alpha. Now, going on to the third point. So, here I am going to multiply. I am going to multiply 1 by E raised to J of psi. So, E t into E raised to J of psi is equal to E naught 
e raised to j psi plus e raised to j2 psi plus e raised to j3 psi plus dot 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 plus e raised to j of n psi. Let's call this as equation number 2. In the fourth point, what we will do is we will subtract 2 from 1. Okay, so we're going to subtract 2 from 1. So I'm writing it down here. The 1 was Et is equal to E naught. 1 plus E raised to J psi. E raised to J2 psi. Plus E raised to J3 psi. Plus dot dot. Plus E raised to J n minus 1 psi. Minus of E raised to J psi into E of t is equal to E naught e raised to j psi plus e raised to j2 psi plus e raised to j3 psi plus dot dot e raised to j n minus 1 psi plus e raised to j n of psi. Right? This was our second equation. And uh, this is our first equation. So when we subtract this, all the common terms will go and you will get et the left hand side minus e raised to j psi of et is equal to e naught will come out in inside what will be left is only this part right it is minus because i'm taking minus of so minus into plus will become minus right rest every element is going to get cancelled out so i hope this is clear from the subtraction part so after the subtraction was done what do we get? So, we can take Et common here. So, I will take Et common. 1 minus E raised to J of psi is equal to E naught bracket 1 minus E raised to J n naught psi. Right? I am getting this. Now, equation number 5. Et is equal to E naught of 1 minus E raised to J n psi upon 1 minus e raised to j psi, right? So, this is equation number 3. Now, from this, we can further simplify that 1. Now, this is mathematics. Now, I'm going to take that e raised to j n psi as, I'm splitting it as j n psi by 2 into e raised to j n psi by 2 upon 1 minus e raised to j psi by 2 into e raised to j psi by 2, right? Now, this 1 also we are going to split as e raised to j n psi by 2 into e raised to minus j n psi by 2, isn't it? Because we want it to represent as 1 minus e raised to j n psi by 2 into e raised to j n psi by 2. So, please write it with me. That would be better. So, as we are doing e raised to j psi by 2 into e raised to minus j psi by 2 minus e raised to j psi by 2 into e raised to j psi by 2. Right? So, moving on, let's see now what to do. This is, uh, now you can take some things common here. So, I am just writing it in a different. So, I am taking j n psi by 2 common. And in the denominator, I'm taking j psi by 2 common. So, in the bracket, I will get e raised to minus j n psi by 2 minus e raised to j n psi by 2 upon e raised to minus j psi by 2 minus e raised to j psi by 2. Right? So, now this term looks, I'm taking this in the numerator. I will take this part in the numerator. And this looks like the sign term in trigo, right? So now, what am I going to get? I will get E naught E raised to equal to, okay? J n, this is my E total, right? So J n psi by 2 into E minus J psi by 2 sine of n psi by 2 upon sine of psi by 2, right? Now, this will become E naught E raised to J. I am just taking out common. N minus 1 psi by 2, right? I can write this like this. Uh, into sine of 
n psi by 2. So that n is in the numerator only. And this will become psi by 2. So this is what uh, our expression is looking uh, at point number 6. right? Now this point number 7, what we're going to do is now we're going to represent this angle. Basically, we're getting magnitude and angle. So we will separate it out as E naught sine of n psi by 2 upon sine of psi by 2. Angle, we will take this as E raised to J phi. Okay. And this phi angle, we will take it as n minus 1 psi by 2. That means that n minus 1 psi by 2 here is represented by phi. So this n minus 1 psi by 2, we have represented as phi. So this represents basically the phase of the signal. This is the phase of the signal. Okay. So now from this, let's move ahead to the seventh point. So what is our E total? It's going to be E naught sine of N psi by 2 upon sine of psi by 2. And that E raised to J phi, I can write it as cos of phi plus J sine of phi. So this is my representation, right? So finally, the total far field pattern of the linear array of N isotropic point sources is given by. So I repeat, finally, the total far field pattern <clears throat> of the linear array of n isotropic point sources. So I will write here the total far field pattern of linear array of n isotropic point sources is given by. So whenever they ask array factor, then this is the derivation that you will go for. So ET is equal to E naught sine of N psi by 2 upon sine of psi by 2 into the angle phi. Right? So the phi value, this, this phi is now Basically, E raised to J of phi. Okay, so that's just the angle. So that's why we just take it as phi. We are more bothered about the magnitude part of it. So what is it going to become now? At point number 9 of the derivation, we will have to consider only the magnitude. So as I said, it will become Et upon E naught now is sine of N psi upon 2 upon sine of psi by 2. I hope you are writing with me. Point number 10. We can look at the maximum electric field. Right? We want to find out what is the maximum electric field. That means we basically want to find E T of max. Now when does this E T of max happen? You know, basically it happens when your psi is 0. Okay? So the maximum power can be obtained at a distant point P from all the elements when psi is equal to 0. So what we are saying is in the total field vector, if psi is 0, then the equation will become, uh, should I say it will become indeterministic. Because if psi becomes equal to 0 in this expression that we have got, if psi becomes equal to 0, that means this numerator will become 0. Then what's the point? It will be indeterministic. So we use a rule which is called as the L hospital rule. What is it called as? L hospital rule. So we can't substitute directly phi is equal to 0. If we do that, then this will become a very absurd value. That means it will become 0 basically. And what's the point? So we have to use the L hospital rule to evaluate this function that we have got. So what is this L hospital rule? It means that the numerator and the denominator of this function needs to be separately differentiated under psi is equal to 0. So we're not going to take it together. We're going to take it separately. So the Hell Hospital's rule we are going to apply here. Psi is equal to 0 of the total electric field is E0. I'm going to take separately the derivative uh, in the numerator and separately in the denominator. 
Okay, so this is going to be done separately in the numerator and denominator. So what's my point number 11 going to be? It's going to be the maximum electric field is equal to E naught limit at psi equal to 0 n upon 2 cos of n psi by 2 upon half of cos of psi by 2. I've taken derivative of sine. That's why I'm getting it as cos. So this will become E naught. Further, we are applying the limit that uh, this psi is equal to 0 is going to be substituted here and here. So you know this will become n upon 2 cos of 0 upon 1 by 2 cos of 0. Right? So what is our ET max? Our ET max is nothing but E naught into n. Right? So ET max is equal to E naught into n if your psi is equal to 0. So the maximum value of ET. So what can I conclude? The maximum value of ET is n times the field, n times the field from a single source. From a single source. So the maximum value of ET is uh, n times the uh, field from a single source, right? So ET is that uh, what we were looking at point P and E naught is for the individual elements. You can finish off this derivation by saying that we can also find the normalized field. So normalized field is given by E normalized. You know, you must have done impedance to normalize or divide. So similarly, E normalize ET upon ET of max. So this will become nothing but E naught sine of N psi upon 2 upon sine of psi by 2 upon E naught into N. So E naught, E naught will get cancelled. So what is your normalized value of electric field? Your normalized value of electric field is nothing but sine of n psi upon 2 upon sine of psi by 2. And of course, there is an n there. Only E naught has got cancelled in the previous. So, n is there. This is called as the array factor normalized of n point sources. So I hope you understood this derivation for array factor. Please practice. Please go through it once again. There's a very, very important 8 to 10 marks question on the array factor that is of the n element uniform linear array. So it's always given as the n element because we are considering n elements uniform linear array. So we are finding the array factor for this case. Is that clear? So, whenever they ask you linear array and uh, isotropic sources, if the question comes, then you have to go for this derivation. Thank you.